Hey, what's going on you guys? In this video, we'll be covering an NPM package that allows you to easily add the Google Places autocomplete feature to any of your Angular applications. Let's get started. All right, getting started. So this, this video does assume that you have an Angular application already set up. We just have a simple skeleton one set up already. So the next thing you're gonna do is head over to npmjs.org and we're gonna go ahead and head up to the search bar. We're gonna search Angular Google Place. The one that we're looking for is going to be called NGX Google Places Autocomplete. Go ahead and grab this one. Uh, you do notice that it does have an MIT license, so we're good there again. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this NPM statement. We're gonna head over to our terminal and in our project path, we're gonna paste that. We're gonna go ahead and run it. If this is your first time running this, this may take a moment. All right, so once that finishes downloading, we're gonna go ahead and head back over to NPM. And what we're gonna do is scroll down a little bit and we're gonna grab this script tag. And once we have this copied, we'll head back over to our project and we need to locate our index.html file, which is located in the source folder. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And in our head tag, we're going to go ahead and paste this script. And if you notice, it does ask for an API key, which we do not yet have. So we need to go ahead and go grab one. So we're going to go back over to NPM. We're going to scroll down a bit and we'll grab this Google link, which will take us over to Google Places. In here, you can go ahead and hit get started to start signing up for an API key. All right, so it'll ask you to choose which ones you want access to. We're gonna choose maps, routes, and places, which will give us full access using our API key. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue, and it'll ask for a project. For this, we'll choose a new project. We're gonna go ahead and hit next. This may take a little bit to load. All right, so once that's done loading, it'll take us into our billing page. For me, I already have billing set up. Uh, do note that you have 150,000 requests per 24 hour period for free but you do need to enter some kind of billing information, but you won't be charged unless you go over those limits. So you can go ahead and hit next on these, just keep continuing through the process and this will actually generate our API key. And once that's complete, we'll go ahead and copy this and this will be our API key that we need to go back to our project and paste. So inside of our script tag where it asks for an API key, we're gonna go ahead and paste that and then we're gonna save our project. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head back over to NPM we're gonna start actually importing the modules. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this import statement, head back over to our project, and we need to locate our app.module.ts file. And in here up towards the top, we're gonna to go ahead and paste this in. And we're actually gonna grab the Google Places module and bring it down to the import section and paste this in also. So we'll head back over to NPM. We need to grab this input element, the HTML element, and you'll notice that there's a bunch of Angular directives and other attributes that might be a little bit foreign, but don't be confused with these. So we're gonna go ahead and head to our app.html file. And we're gonna go ahead and replace our previous one we had in there. And we'll go ahead and save that. And next thing we'll do is we're gonna come down and we're gonna copy this function. And this is a function that is called on every single event that gets fired when a user selects a new address. So we go to our app.ts file and we're gonna go ahead and paste this function in. And you'll notice that in the parameters it is looking for an address. We're gonna look for type any since we're not doing any other imports here. And we do have a, a variable already set that's called formatted address. This basically just prints out the address that was chosen to the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and set this at equal to the address dot formatted underscore address, which accesses the formatted address property of the Google Places. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. We'll head back over to our HTML. You'll notice another directive, which is called options. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. We're gonna go set this equal to some restrictions. So this allows us to actually choose what city, what states, etc. that are chosen. You can go ahead and head over to Google for more information on that. And for this, we're going to go ahead and do component restrictions. And we're going to set this equal to an object. And we're going to go ahead and we'll say, we'll limit the country to, let's say, Australia. Uh, for other country codes, again, go ahead and head over to Google. They have a full list of the country codes that you can use here. So for this, we'll just use Australia. And so now we're actually gonna run our application now that we have everything set. We're gonna go ahead and run the command ng serve dash dash open. And this might take a moment. All right, once that finishes running, it'll open up our project in a new tab on port 4200. And if we did this correctly, we should be able to start typing in the input field and seeing addresses populate, which we do. Do note that the addresses are restricted to the country of Australia. We could of course set that component restriction to any country that we choose. So I know we kind of ran through this kind of quick, so we'll head back over to the HTML just to kind of do a brief overview again. There's two most important things to note here, and that's gonna be the options directive, which allows you to set the component restrictions. And then there's also the on address change event, which calls our function every single time. That's gonna be where you'd handle all the logic to strip out the addresses that the user chooses. 
All right, that'll just about do it for this video. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing for more programming-related content coming very soon. Thanks, guys.